Hello and welcome to this section of the Trig and Precalculus Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to continue our discussion of solving trigonometric equations. And I hope now you can see that you kind of proceed as you usually do for an algebraic equation, but at some point you get down to where you have to deal with that trig function and finding out what angles work. And a lot of times writing the unit circle down and drawing on your knowledge from previous lessons is going to help you with that. So let's uh, tackle a slightly different kind of equation. Uh, and show you how to do that. What if you had secant squared of theta minus 4 is equal to 0? And I ask you to solve that for all values of theta that work. Okay? Well, first of all, it is definitely possible to do this in terms of secant, right? I mean, if you know the secant function really well. However, I kind of encourage people to learn sine, cosine, and tangent as far as calculating the values on the unit circle really well. Secant, cotangent, and cosecant really follow from that. So that's kind of what I'm going to do here. What we're going to do is sort of abandon the secant and rewrite it. And to do that, we're going to use the trig rainbow. So we have sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. And we see that secant goes along with cosine. So secant squared is going to be 1 over cosine squared theta minus 4 is equal to 0. At first, you might look at that and say, well, that doesn't look any better. But then you realize, really, it's not so bad because I can move the 4 over like that. And then, really, what you have is I can invert both sides, which is divide, take 1 and divide by both sides, which is going to give me cosine squared theta on the left and 1 fourth on the right. And if that confuses you, just inverting both sides, if that, if that confuses you on being legal, you can just multiply to get cosine squared over here and then divide by 4. So you'll get a 1 fourth over here, you'll get a cosine squared over here, so I'm just rewriting it like this. Now I can take the square root of both sides, giving me cosine theta on the left. So I have cosine theta on the left, but when I do that I have to do plus or minus the square root of the other side, so plus or minus 1 half here. The square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2. You have to put the plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides. So again, because of this plus or minus, I really have like two equations. I have cosine of theta is equal to 1 half, and I have cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. And I need to kind of deal with them separately because they're going to lead to different results. So, just like before, let's go to our trusty unit circle. So here is the unit circle, or I should say the xy plane. I'm not really going to draw the actual circle because it doesn't really help you that much. Mostly I like to do this so I can kind of mark off what angles uh, I believe are going to work. Now let me ask you, where, where is cosine equal to one half? And this comes from our discussion of the unit circle in Trig and Precal Volume 1. Cosine of 60 degrees is going to be one half. Cosine of 60 degrees is going to be one half, which in radians is pi over 3. And so 60 degrees is up here, this is pi over three radians. Here we're going to have a positive one-half result, right? Positive one-half result. Because we know that cosine of any multiple of 60 degrees or a multiple of pi over three is going to give us our one-half and we know it's positive in this quadrant because cosine's positive here. So if we move over to this quadrant and ask ourselves, does, does this angle work? Uh, it doesn't because cosine's negative here. If we move to this quadrant and ask us if this angle is going to work, it doesn't because cosine is negative over here. But when we move over to this quadrant, this 60 degree angle, kind of the one 60 degrees you know, from, the, from the 